As students and parents settle back into their school routines, it's important to also focus on their mental health and well-being. Dr. Holly McKenna with Dara Wellness joins us now with some tips for you and your family. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Good morning. Good morning. So why is the return of school also not just about picking up the uniform and all of the extra physical things that you need? Why is this the mental well-being something you should also check into as well? Yeah, so this is a time of change. And with change comes that kind of feeling in your stomach and you know what we call anxiety and stress. And it's really your body preparing for change. But sometimes the mind can take over and we can get anxious and worked up and you know moods can get out of control. It's a time for students when sleep can become a concern. About 60% of middle schoolers and 70% of high schoolers actually report sleep difficulties during the school year. Um, it's also a time when folks can maybe feel more isolated because you're changing schools or changing classrooms and don't see the friends you see every day. Or if you're a little one, it's a brand new experience away from mom and dad. Um, also, there's always the danger at this time of year, and I have been a mom that's done this of the over scheduling of our children. Um, if we are over scheduling and don't have enough time to just be and have that stillness, then there's no time for the learning to kind of take place in the brain and have that mindfulness space and allow for us to be still and lower that anxiety, lower that mood difficulties and just be and allow for all that to happen. Well, each parent knows their child. I mean, for the most part, right? Yeah, I mean, you, you know when something's off. So what are right. some of the signals and symptoms and things that you should look for that maybe you need to address that they're, they're having issues with yeah. that day approaching or being back in school? Absolutely. So little ones tends to be more of a physical concern. So we'll often see headaches, stomach aches. I was actually the kid that had a tummy ache every year in September until the pediatrician told my mom, there's a pattern. Yeah. <laughs> and it was my anxiety. You know, when you were little, we don't have the words for that. Mm -hmm. um, older kids, it might be changes in sleep, like I said, or isolating or being more irritable is something you might see. You know, again, that might be the change in sleep patterns, but it's something to be mindful of, something to keep an eye on, something to check in with your kids about too. So how do you address that? I mean, where do you start aside from also checking in with a counselor, but are there ways you can assure your child that there's no need to be anxiety, to be yeah. really anxious? Yeah, I, there's some, so it's just some tips to kind of keep in mind with the school year. Um, having family time or check-in time, it doesn't have to be this big to-do. It can be the drive to school if they're awake enough, the drive home. Having that regular time when you're checking in, talking about how your day went, what went well, what didn't. Um, that allows space for discussions about mental health, for you to maybe check in if you're noticing changes in your child, whether it be you know, them being more irritable or complaining of physical ailments. Um, also having a regular schedule, you know, like I was saying about the overscheduling can be an issue. So having a regular family dinner, that's another time you can all be together, but also allow for the nutrition that you need. Um, having time outside to exercise, but also working, especially with our middle schoolers, working with how to balance schoolwork and playtime and how it's important to have both. Like that's really the brain needs both to be able to do all the things, mm -hmm. but it's also important for us as adults to do that as well. So these are skills that uh, as parents, we can really address um, at home. And then if we notice things that these basic kind of uh, skills aren't helping address, then reaching out to the school counselor, talking to uh, the teacher and seeing you know, what they're viewing at school. Because sometimes we might see something at home and at school they're perfectly fine. And, and lastly, for the child that is an introvert and just hates the thought of going back to school or just going to a new class, a new school, how do you deal with that leading up to that day or just yeah. the days after they go back? Absolutely. It's a lot about having support people. So it might be as a mom and dad or grown up reaching out to other parents or grown ups of children in the same grade or same level and being the proactive one if your child is a little more hesitant to create situations where maybe they're getting together over the weekends or after school, um, getting into activities that they're interested in so they can meet people that are like them, um, especially if they're in a new place or new school and they're having a difficult time connecting with peers. Um, and then just having that support network, having those counselors, having those teachers, having the trusted grown-ups around them so they do have people to turn to when maybe they're having a moment and they just need some quiet. Right.
It is a big deal. We all remember that first day, especially yeah. when you're walking into a place you don't know anyone. So Absolutely. I appreciate your tips. Thank you. Absolutely. So if you're looking for a fun activity,